And I thank you, Father, that just just give them seed, Lord God, as sowers, Lord God, in every area of their lives. And I thank you, Father, that they are thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Lord, we pray, Father, for the for 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 the new facility, Lord God, we say, come forth in Jesus' name, and we speak flow and overflow to everything that has to deal with that in Jesus' name. And now speaking of the prophetic, Rondon, Noe, we welcome you. We thank you. Now I want everybody, I'm doing this again, to take off their mute button right now. And I want you to welcome Rondon and Noe Mathis. And Yay, come on, take your mute off. <laughs> bless you, Glenn. Bless you, man. Hey, Noy. Hey, Bishop Bell Billingsley, how are you, sir? God bless you, sir. Doing well, doing well. Forgive my tardiness. I'm just getting in. Oh, I am too, man. Uh, but uh, it's, it's good to uh, have you on. Bishop Billingsley is uh, our Thursday night speaker, and he's from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, he is a pastor uh, uh, and a bishop and overseer over a whole organization uh, in the, uh, the uh, down south and throughout the country. And uh, he, uh, he pastors um, um, Worship Center uh, International. Yes, sir. Yep. And uh, what's the name of your... Um, uh, organization? Worship Center International. So okay. our organization is up under me. It's Worship Center International. We uh, oversee 23 churches. So God is good to us. Awesome. Awesome. And so um, it's good to have you on and uh, thank you for uh, uh, being a part of this awesome week, this awesome yes. solemn assembly week. Um, uh, we are live here and on Facebook. And so um, tonight I get the treat of tag teaming with my wife. Amen. And so um, I, uh, I want to introduce her. I, I know Glenn introduced her and, uh, and uh, I want to, she is actually uh, definitely my better half. Uh, as you can see, uh, she's uh, quite uh, beautiful. And uh, to, this year is our 25th year of marriage. And so uh, in October, we'll be married 25 years. This is our, uh, uh, la uh, excuse me, I was going to say in, in one more month, we'll be married 25 years. And so Noe, bless you. Thank you for uh, agreeing to do this with me. I know uh, it's not easy a teacher being with a preacher. <laughs> well, we've done it for 25 years. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so um, I want to I want to uh, get us on the on the video uh, on the live on the hope um, on, on the Facebook live uh, me and her together. So I'm gonna ask uh, Glenn and uh, Bishop Billings Billingsley to uh, to mute your video, and uh, and then we're gonna get started. And so Noah, you want to open up with prayer? Okay. So yes. Father, we invite you into this time of um, getting more understanding. Give us more revelation to understand how to um, hallow your name, as well as getting more understanding of how you speak to us, your people in the earth today, and um, how it relates to us and our following Christ, um, how it helps us to, to pray, even to know what to say when we pray that we're praying in agreement with your will and your plan for our lives. Amen. Amen. And so um, tonight we're going to uh, tackle that first principle of becoming a praying believer or a praying church uh, from, from my book, My House Shall Be Called a House of Prayer, The Seven Principles to Becoming a Praying Church. And uh, it is from Matthew 21, 10. And so uh, if you guys want to go there, um, uh, Matthew 21, 10, and uh, it is that first principle in the, in the 10th verse um, where uh, they asked when Jesus came into uh, Jerusalem and they were saying, um, 
Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Uh, they wanted to know in that 10th verse, who is this? Who is this? And, and, uh, and this is, and this is the, the, the actual uh, predecessor for him actually showing them who he was. He didn't answer them, but they answered him. Uh, uh, he says, uh, uh, they said actually in the ninth verse, they were saying the crowds going ahead of him and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And then the 10th verse, when he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred saying, who is this? And the crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth. And Jesus entered the temple, drove out the money changers and those that were buying and selling in the temple and uh, overturned the tables of the money chambers and the seats who were selling doves. And he said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of thieves. So, so that first, first principle, the principle that we're going to highlight tonight, Noe and I, is the principle of the prophetic in the house, the prophetic in the house. And, uh, and there's no other person that I would want to, uh, to team up with for this principle of the prophetic in the house than my wife, because uh, though many don't see her uh, in the forefront of ministry, she is very prophetic highly uh, apt at teaching and activating in the prophetic. And, uh, you know, she had to be to, to hear God to marry me. And so, uh, <laughs> and so Noi, Noi is uh, someone that she hears from God in such a way that it could be scary for some. It could be scary. It was scary for me uh, when uh, we were married those first few years and uh, she would hear things that I was uh, kind of uh, uh, unsure uh, of whether or not she was hearing from God. I'm going to give a testimony real quick, Noy, of, uh, of, uh, of Melanie. And, and when, when you heard what you heard that day, uh, one early morning, one early morning, uh, it was like three in the morning. Noy wakes me up, y'all, and says... Uh, and we was pastoring my dad's little storefront church. And she said, this person is having an affair with this person. And I looked at her. I mean, you know, she, she might as well had said that uh, a cow is having an affair with a goat. I mean, the, the, the actual uh, uh, possibility in the natural of that happening was like a, a million to one. She, she said this person, which was a 20 something year old member in our church uh, in the mid twenties was having a, an affair with this person, which was a 60 year old Bishop on the other side of town. <laughs> and so I, I looked at her and I said, uh, what? And, and she said, yeah. She said, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and, and, and I said, well, uh, it's three in the morning, uh, uh, you know, uh, go back to sleep. And so, so uh, when, you know, in the process of going back to sleep, she said, no, 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 no. I, I feel like we're supposed to, uh, you know, reach out to this person and ask and ask to pray for them. And so I said, Okay, but I'm thinking number one, there's no way this could be this could be uh, true because this person is on the it, it's a it, it's a bishop on the other side of town that we really don't have any fellowship with, and and, uh, and so and then he's in his sixties, old, big, and 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 the girl in our church was in her twenties, and, and so. Uh, so anyway, uh, I said, well, go ahead and call her. And, uh, and, and she called and then she, uh, she uh, 
asked her about the uh, if she was having an affair with this bishop, and uh, and all I heard was screaming on the other end. <laughs> This this person started screaming and, and then you know she calmed down and 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 Noe said no I'm not we're not con con wanting to condemn you we just uh, the Lord spoke it revealed it to me I want to pray for you and from that point that was like our second year or so in marriage from that point I was like okay I was scared of your prophetic <laughs> hey Noe go ahead what how how you doing today. Uh, uh I want to, I want to just, I just wanted to set that up for you. Yeah. Well, so, but that's a good setup because one of the things, um, back when, um, you know, the prophetic is now coming back to the forefront, God's bringing it back to the forefront. And, um, one of the things that's important to know, like, and fortunately I was not as, um, I, I had a little encounter, like I would hear stuff here and there, but it never, and it's, it never dealt with other people. So when this came up, it was like, I think the Lord is telling me. And um, so, and it was like, we got to pray. Like, you know, so that's the thing. God reveals stuff, but he wants us to pray about it. He doesn't want us to just yeah. go deal or, you know, confront people. That's not the, um, that's not the, the gift of the prophetic or the office of a prophet. That's not... That's not what that is. And there is a distinction even between prophecy, prophetic, and the office of a prophet. Um, the office of the prophet is someone that has been set in that office by um, an apostle. We, you cannot just set yourself as, as a prophet. Um, that's something that's done by, um, you know, the the office of an apostle and or bishop within that community so even if if you're called to be a, a like if you're set in this in the office of a prophet in a particular community you're not the off you're not a prophet for all communities you're just a, you're set in the office of the prophet for that community or that organization but um so that's that's something so everybody that calls themselves or identifies themselves as prophets, I mean, it, it remains to be seen, but just because they have prophet in front of their name doesn't necessarily mean that they are walking in the office or has been, uh, has been set in the office of the prophet. Then there's what happened in this case, though, was prophetic. And the reason that the Lord revealed it was so that we could, you know, pray for her reveal it to her that somebody else knows god knows because he told me there was no way for me to know there was no indication there was no sign no indication no um no you know inferencing or just you know by human nature just like seeing different interactions we there was nothing so it was just never something that i would have even imagined but the lord showed it to us for one we were pastoring the ministry for another we, you know, thank God. I mean, he told me and I talked to Brandon because I didn't, again, I wasn't just so quick to just want to reveal like, oh, guess what God told me? He told me you were doing ABC. You know, it was just like, um, this is what I heard. The Lord said this and I, you know, talked to Brandon and then he was like, well, let's call. And the next day we did call and to all of our surprise, <laughs> her surprise that God revealed it to somebody, our surprise that it was even happening but it was all for God's plan for his purpose. And what God's purpose for her was not that situation. So God was revealing it to her to say, I know what's going on. And then he, re he shows it to us, but we pray, we, we come to her. We're not condescending or condemning, but we're like, you've got to address this. This has to be addressed. So that kind of goes right in line with what we're talking about tonight, prophetic in the house. Because God speaks, we, you know, as much as we think that we know and, you know, we, we do know some things, but we still don't know everything. We are not all knowing. We are not omniscient. We do not know it all. Um, even so, uh, when, and let me, let me uh, interject here. The, the, the purpose of this prophetic is not necessarily to prophesy uh, and when, so when we talk about the prophetic in the house, 
um, uh, we're, we're not talking about the uh, the inference of the prophetic, as Noe said, the one set in the office of the prophet, but we're talking about the ability to hear from God. You need an ability to hear from God. If you're going to uh, uh, be in a relationship with anybody, you need to have communication with them. And if you are in a relationship with someone that you are not able to communicate with, in other words, they can't hear you and you can't hear them, then you're not in a relationship. And so when we talk about the relationship with God, our ability to hear from God has a lot to do with our desire to pray to God. Our ability to hear from God has a lot to do with our desire to pray for, for, to God. If you cannot hear from God for yourself, you will not pray to God for yourself. And so it's important that if you're going to be a praying believer, your light switch or your actual activation for your ability to hear from God is turned on. You got to turn on the switch in your ability to hear from God. And why I say that Noi is, is that, uh, that example to me is because Noi did not, um, we did not get married with a, a um, you know, of any type of thinking that, um, that we were going to do ministry together uh, um, uh, by way of fivefold ministry gift. Now, the way I met my wife is I heard God speak to me and, and, and tell me what she would be and what she would say she would be. But when uh, I heard what he told me she would be and what she would say she would be, it was like, Lord, I will never find this type of woman because it would have been like finding a needle in a haystack. Uh, uh, you know, the, the thing that she would say that she's called to be that I wrote down in the Jerusalem Hilton in 1994, it was like, uh, you know, it would have been like, uh, you know, someone saying uh, that they're called to be, you know, a, a some some type of uh, Martian from another world. Uh, at that time, you know, uh, it was not uh, a natural thing for uh, where I grew up for a woman to feel called to be a a pastor. Uh, uh, and and the Lord said that that she would my wife would be a pastor uh, and and she would say this is what I'm called to be and and, and so I was like I, I don't know I don't know if this is you or not God and, and so but when we met and when we came together and God gave her um, who she was called to be. And, uh, and she told me what God said, and that's how we came together. That's how I knew that she was the one, even before, uh, you know, I actually told her I knew. Um, uh, she wasn't going after ministry. She wasn't, she was new in, in the faith even. Uh, but her ability to hear from God is, is, is what I saw as not something you do to preach, but something you do because you're in a relationship with God. I was doing it to preach. <laughs> she was doing it because she loved God and she was in a relationship with God. Amen. Yes. I was, um, I mean, I was newly born again, like I think two years in before we got married. And, um, so everything was all new and I was, you know, I was reborn, I was made new. And so I, I honestly, I thought everybody heard like this. And so um, I, I come to find out that that was not the case, uh, but I just thought everybody heard God like, like I heard him. I thought, you know, you guys are believers. You've been doing this longer than me. Like, surely you hear, don't you hear? Like, you know, and at one point we all do, 
um, and I understand that everybody's not called to be a prophet, but we are all called to be prophetic because that is how we know um, that we are um, in alignment with God. Like that's how we know that we are um, following our heavenly father's path for our life, that we're in agreement and we're, you know, being discipled by him. We're being led uh, by them. That's, that's the only way that we know we're going in the right direction. So um, just want to insert this here. Like I know many of, of the people that are joining us tonight, like you're not newly saved. You've been saved for a while. You've had some experiences. Um, all have not been positive. There's been disappointments. There's been um, frustrations and things like that because you know, we see him and, and we, like I said before, we only see in part. We only hear in part. He does not tell us everything. As much as he does tell us, he still doesn't tell us everything. He doesn't show us the entire picture. And it's for our benefit that he doesn't. Uh, part of it is if you reveal it all, then there it stunts, it delays, um, it stunts the, de the development. If we don't have to believe God, we won't. If we don't have to pray to God, we won't. That's our human nature. God knows that. He knows our frame. So he has built into his um, discipleship plan. <laughs> you know, he's put some certain things in there. And one of the things is the need to seek him. But if we don't, um, what happens is we initially start, usually we're excited. We're, you know, this is something we've never experienced. But over time, over time, we, we tend to just settle into where we are. We might even um, go back to some old ways, you know, because the newness is worn off and, you know, we're not, everything is not working out for our good at the, you know, at the, every turn anymore. And we're, uh, you know, we're kind of just, you know, fall in or we got people around us that are like, you know, um, it doesn't take all that or that's too much or you just too intense, you deep, you too deep. You got, you, so you got different scenarios on all fronts. However, um, even in the things that have not happened the way that, you know, you envisioned it from what God said, even though it has not necessarily happened yet, doesn't mean it's not going to happen because one of the things that we have to understand is that it's in God's time and his way. Yeah. And all the Bible, there are examples. And then that's why we have the book, the Bible, the living word is a history book as well for us to get understanding and glean from what he has done in the past what people have done human people what people have done in the past yeah past how he's responded how they responded it's an opportunity for us as we're seeking him seeking his way seeking yeah. his nature this is what all of the prophetic is all about we need this back in joseph's and abraham and those days there was only one person that was anointed to hear to speak to God and hear from God, one person out of all, all humanity, one person. But since Christ, that's not the case. And that's, that's a whole nother lesson. But what I mean is that we no longer, a lot of times that scripture, Glenn, that uh, you read earlier, um, I can't remember all of what, what you read, but I, and I, I know it's not a familiar, it must be the Passion Translation, but it basically talked about how, um, you know, God is training us. He's causing us to seek him. Yeah. He wants to look to him. And he knows that if we just get everything, if everything just goes the way we imagine, that the power in that, that it's not going to end up being for our good. And that's what happened with the Tower of Babylon. Yeah. So I want to encourage all of us who are here that, um, you know, this, I know I'm ahead of this, but at some point we, we need to acknowledge and repent for a stop, for not continuing to believe. And we need to take that courage, take up that courage and that boldness to continue to believe and not despise prophecy. Not Amen. Amen. Yeah, so not so let me, good. Let, let me uh, give us the definition of prophecy. Um, and so um, a lot of times, we try to get too deep with prophecy and the prophetic. And, uh, and so uh, prophecy, uh, biblical, the, biblically, the definition of prophecy is uh, prophecy is the testimony of Jesus 
and is the revelation of what's on his heart for his people. Uh, Revelation 19.10, put that down. Prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. Put that down. Prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. And it is the revelation of what is on his heart for his people. And so all we're saying when we say, um, in order to be a, a praying believer, is you have to be prophetic. All we're saying is you've got to be filled with the spirit and witness Jesus as a testimony in the earth that he is alive. Prophecy is the testimony of Jesus and is the revelation of what's on his heart. And you have the prophetic through the power of the Holy Ghost. In other words, you have the prophetic ability to hear God and witness and testify of who Jesus is because that's what the Holy Ghost was given to us for. So uh, uh, the, the uh, Revelation 19.10 says, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Acts uh, 1 and 8 says, after the Holy Ghost has come upon us, we shall have power and we shall be witnesses unto him. So the prophetic that we're talking about is the testimony of Jesus and our ability to witness that he is alive. How do you know that he is alive when people come to you and want to actually uh, attest the fact that your God is who he says he is? Because he talks to me, because he leads me, because he guides me. It's not a pre, it's not a premonition, it's Jesus. Amen. It's, it's the Holy Ghost. And so uh, uh, those two things you, you have to understand if you're going to, if you're going to uh, either be prophetic or recapture your prophetic nature that's resident in the, in the spirit of God. Listen, I'm going I'm to say this again. I said it earlier uh, uh, and nor you can jump in anytime. Uh, if you don't hear from God for yourself, you won't pray to God for yourself. Yeah. If you don't hear from God for yourself, you won't seek God for yourself. You will always go seeking somebody to pray for you or somebody to give you a word. And that's where the body of Christ is. 95% of the body of Christ is they they are they are prayerless because they have been uh, uh, raised in the Moses generation and in and brought to believe and taught to believe that the ability to hear from God is only the pastor's. Uh, ability or responsibility, only the, the five-fold ministry gifts responsibility, and uh, they will go into the mountain and they will come back and tell me what God says. That is something that is uh, being debunked and removed from a, the expression of Christianity, even in this year with the coronavirus, even in this year with the shutdown of the church. If you do not learn to hear from God for yourself and seek God for yourself, you will be led astray by the spirit of the age, by the antichrist, and you'll end up, when it's all said and done, deceived, Taking a mark, thinking that, well, you know, this is, you know, this is what everybody needs to do because for the good of, 
for the good of society, you know, this, this virus, you know, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 it'll kill you. And, uh, you know, we got to think of everybody and, uh, you know, we, we've got to go ahead and, 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 and take this vaccination today, tomorrow, we got to go ahead and take this mark because it's for the good of society and for us to stay alive and keep one another alive. If you can't hear from God for yourself, you won't seek God for yourself and you'll go with the herd. You'll go with what everybody's doing. You'll go with what everybody's saying. You'll go with what everything uh, uh, that is being presented to you. Now, amen. that's and that is something what part of all of what this is, what God is again, God's a father. He he's our heavenly father. And he's saying, listen, I need you all to to wake up. First of all, I need everybody to wake up. I need you to acknowledge, you know, I need you. I need to see where you're at because he already knows he's he's on the throne. He's not changing. He does not change. He's the same forever. Yes, forever. Uh, yesterday today and forever. He is the same, but he's wondering where we are as his people. That's what he's wondering. And so he allowed this, he sent this and he's saying, okay, are they going to humble themselves? Because some people have left. Some may be on here today. Some people, a lot of people probably aren't on, but they have left because they were shut down in ministry because people, and, and they didn't know people, most people are not, they're not trying to shut you down or they're, they're in the name of protecting um but they got they were hurt they weren't understood they were misunderstood uh, they were out of order and instead of being discipled and things so they left they got offended they, they left so they're not they're not even serving they're not following god they believe in god but they're not following christ they believe in christ they're not following but for some of us that may be on here today I just want to encourage and, and just ask, you know, just pray for 10 seconds. Just Lord, release healing, uh. release forgiveness, because there's unforgiveness because you were misunderstood. Uh, so somebody may have hurt you by re responding in an ungodly way that they thought in the name of protecting because they didn't understand. But all that was part of God's training. See, God knows everything that we need. He uh. knows certain families. We don't get to choose our parents. We, we are just born into a family. We don't get to choose. We didn't get to say, okay, we want this one. No, he put us there and he knows everything. Like we're going to get everything that we need, the good and the bad to develop and for us to grow and develop for God's purpose, not for yeah. our purpose, but for God's purpose. And that is something here in America that we've, um, you know, we're, we're coming to the reality of this, that we don't, again, we don't know it all and we don't have all the plans and God is not just somebody that's kind of off and we, we call to him when we need him. And when we don't need him, we're doing our own thing. Cause we got this, you know, that's kind of how we've been, but as a nation, but God is revealing all of these revealing our hearts to us. And he's saying, this is a time for, first of all, to return to me. He's not going to condemn us. He's not going to, he's not going to uh, be condes condescending. He's not going to be condemning. He's not going to reject, but we've got to humble ourselves. It's, um, the uh, Psalm says, uh, contrite heart, he will in no wise cast away. Yeah. We've got, to, we've got to humble ourselves. We've got to humble ourselves and we've got to even admit and acknowledge where he reveals that we, we missed it. Yeah. It's not a, finding a uh, fault and blame it's about this is tender and love yeah this, this offense this bitterness this um you know pride this haughtiness is hindering you being able to love me but me being able to love you it's hindering i love you and i want to demonstrate my love but i can't because this hurdle this obstacle this offense this unforgiveness these things are hindering so I, he's revealing it in this time. And I just want to encourage as um, you know, we're listening, you don't have to publicly, I encourage you at some point to confess to someone, but the reason that, and I'm, I'm just scripture jumping here, but I know first John talked about confession. And when we confess, we have fellowship with one another. Yeah. 
with God, but with one another. And part of the reason that we've been um, kicked out of fellowship at times is because, because we're not praying, because we're just doing what we've seen done. Um, it does all of, none of that matters at the end of the day, God is still God. And he is way bigger than all our human, um, you know, tendencies and failures and faults and all. He's much bigger than that. So just like I said, he assigns and puts us in a, in a uh, familial, in a household. He also puts us in bodies, in communities. Yeah. You, we don't flourish if we try to go out from where he has us in that season. So I just wanted to um, insert that in there because people... What Brandon said is true. That That is absolutely positively true. And that's why God's saying, I'm doing this so that my people who are called by my name will respond to me, return to me, yeah. come back to me. Because I got a plan for you. And some of these things that you're, um, that you're, um, you know, you're ascribing to, it's not part of my plan. Yeah. It's not, not about, again, it's not about demonizing one person or another. It's not for us to judge any of that. That's not our place to judge none of that. All we need to do is evaluate us and where we are according to God. And that's, that's the other side of what Brandon is saying. We've got to pray, but not just re recite scriptures. That's, that's yeah. just reciting scriptures. It's not prayer. Now, we all start at one place, which we may start in reciting the word. But if we still reciting the word and we've been born again for 10 years, we are not growing. We're not continuing to grow and mature. And because we're not growing and maturing and we can't blame it all on the people, well, God, that pastor and all that, we don't wanna do that again because God, we make our way hard. We make our own way hard because we don't, we don't submit to and yield to God. We don't yield to him in the community, then we leave the community. And then because we left the community, now the enemies come in and said, you know, you on your own. You can't trust nobody. See, they just like the people you left out the world. Da, 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 all these lies that he's filling our head with. And then he's filling our head with these things. And then we, um, you know, we go on down this path. And so I just, I'm sensing that God is calling us back to him. Yeah. And, and so uh, let, let's go on to the uh, next definition uh, so the first definition is prophecy is the testimony of Jesus, and it is the revelation of what is on his heart for his people. And then uh, let's do the first rule of prophetic ministry. The first rule of prophetic ministry is that it must always honor the written word of God. It must always honor the written word of God. So uh, the best way you can uh, uh, relate and connect uh, the prophecy that lines up with a believer that is interacting and communicating with God is that prophecy is human words reporting something that God brings to your mind. Prophecy is human words reporting something that God brings to your mind. Uh, and, and so uh, the way that you keep prophecy lined up with God is it will always honor the written word of God. If you're saying something that's not in the word, if you're saying something that is not uh, uh, biblically based and you're saying God said it, well, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That's uh, John 1. And so God is his word. And so... In order to uh, have a conversation with God, you've got to begin with the word. You've got to begin with the word. And from that place, you can actually grow into the heart of God. You, you, the scripture says, for this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, 
He hears us. What is his will? His will is his word. His will is his heart. His heart is his word. And so in order to uh, uh, be in a relationship with God and have communication with God and pray to God, you've got to have the basis and the foundation of the word of God. And so this is, this is how uh, I developed. I stumbled upon the prophetic uh, firstly, beginning to uh, uh, preach, and and that was my like I said earlier, that was my first um, you know uh, desire to hear God with was to to have something to say um, uh, uh, for God, and uh, and I didn't I, I did not uh, grow up in a a denomination where um, theology and seminary were, were the were the basis um, for uh, ministry and ministry calling. Um, there's some uh, denominations you you can't even acknowledge or accept the call to ministry until you have gone through seminary and uh, and I'm not knocking that uh, but um, in the denomination I grew up in, uh, if you felt like you were called to preach, they would like throw you up there. <laughs> they would throw you up there and say, okay, let's see. Let's see if you called to preach. Let's see if you got something to say. And so my prayer life began by that baptism by fire just being thrown up before a group after at 21, feeling the call to preach. Uh, but it did not uh, uh, end there because um, it developed into a relationship almost accidentally. And many of you know uh, this testimony uh, and it's in, it's in the book, My House Should Be Called a House of Prayer. Uh, when I, when I, I got a broken heart when I was 23 out of a relationship and I began uh, crying out to God and, and quite frankly, honestly, I was suicidal alone in my home, in my in my uh, apartment room, uh, and, uh, and and I asked God if you don't if you don't do something if you don't if you don't take this pain, I'm I'm checking out tonight, and and at that moment uh, uh, the Holy Ghost stepped in my room, and uh, and and baptized me afresh in the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, Praying in the spirit is what is, is known as today. I didn't know it as praying in the spirit. I just knew it as, uh, you know, it's initial evidence of the Holy Ghost baptism speaking in tongues. When I grew up in the denomination I grew up in, people got the Holy Ghost, but they didn't know what it was for. Uh, it's since been uh, revealed uh, in, in, in both that denomination and in the earth that Tongues is for our ability to speak to God in prayer. And, and so uh, that particular morning, I was baptized in the Holy Ghost afresh and spoke in tongues for like three hours. And, and, and all I knew is that the pain was lifted. All I knew was the, uh, uh, the burden was lifted. And, and, uh, and, and, and that was for about a three or four or five hour period. And then uh, later on in the day, the burden, the pain came back and, uh, and I cried out again on my lunch hour, went and found a, a, a meditation room in the office building that I worked in and cried out again and bam, the Holy Ghost filled me, baptized again and, uh, and so on and so forth. That went on for for about a year, morning, noon, and night, and uh, and it went on to uh, because I, I was I was dealing with a broken heart, and so accidentally almost I stumbled upon the ability to hear God's voice praying in tongues a lot praying in tongues a lot. And I told you earlier, the Holy Ghost will testify of Jesus. The Holy Ghost will speak 
for Jesus. The Holy Ghost will lead you to knowing and hearing the voice of God. Now, this type of prophecy teaching that we're doing is not teaching you how to prophesy. It's teaching you how to hear God's voice. Uh, that's another teaching. But if you're going to uh, hear God's voice, uh, excuse me, if you're going to pray, you're going to have to hear God's voice. And so uh, as I developed this habit of praying in the spirit, six months in, I was healed in my heart. Six months in, I was healed in my heart. However, uh, I was addicted to praying in tongues and hearing God soothe my heart. And, and, and when I would read the word, the word would speak directly to me. The word would speak directly to me. When I would read the word, God would be like he was, he was jumping off the page and saying, this is what you need to do, and this is what I'm going to do, and this is how we're going to do it together. I'm telling you, I, I began marking up my Bible with words that God would speak to me while I was reading the word after I got done praying in the spirit. This this is a must. It is a must that we learn how to pray to God for ourselves through hearing from God for ourselves. And, uh, and the rule of the prophetic ministry uh, that it honors the written word, the way you get an honor for the word in prayer is you don't Pray without allowing God to speak to you from his word. A lot of people pray and spend time in prayer and they think they prayed and actually uh, their prayer has not involved allowing God to speak to them from his word while they are reading the word. And so a prayer time needs to involve you speaking and God speaking. And what that looks like, it could look like you saying something and going quiet and listening. Or you saying something to God in the Holy Ghost and then opening up your word and reading until the word reads you. Opening up your word and reading until God speaks to your situation. Opening up your word and reading until God gives you a peace that he's on the case. This is prophetic praying. This is you speaking and then allowing God to speak to you and then doing what God tells you to do. And, and if, you, if you fail... If you fail in that instance where you, you have a lot to say, but you never take time to hear God speak back to you, then your prayer life will be boring and your prayer life will be one-sided. It will, it will only include prayers of petition, which are you just writing your you know, Christmas list to God, you know, telling him what you want. You know, filling out the, you know, the wish list. You know, my name is Jimmy. You know, <laughs> I want all you can give me. <laughs> that, that, that type of prayer is, is akin to a prayer wheel where you just, you know, turn the wheel and, and, and hope it lands on what it is that you're asking for. And if it does, you know, God answered you. No, 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 no. You, you got to... You got to speak and then you got to let him speak to you. And that involves the word of God. So the first rule of the prophetic is that it always must honor the written word of God. It, it must honor the written word of God. I know I'll tell you how, you know, when we first was uh, married, uh, we, we believed and needed to believe God for everything because, you know, she married a missionary on the missionary field and, and all I had was a word from God. And that's why I said it took her hearing from God to actually marry me because in the natural, 
I didn't have anything to uh, to draw or lure anybody uh, to to get married. And when God said it's time to get married, I said, with what? <laughs> you know, I don't have anything. And 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 I remember the Lord said to me, He said, everything you need, everything she needs, is inside of you. And uh, and and she will when you when 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 I connect you, she will make a demand on whatever's inside of you. And as that demand is made, then I will release those things that she desires and she needs. And and for 25 years, that's how we came together, and and that's how uh, God has. Uh, met our needs, uh, and uh, I, I'm reminded, Noy, of the uh, the the first house where uh, you you said you wanted a, a house, a bed, and a baby that year, 1997, and uh, and God spoke to us through the word. The next day, He spoke to me through the word, and uh, and I was actually. Uh, uh, we, we would write down everything we would want for the new year. Uh, and, and then we would, you know, we would put it before the Lord. And, and this particular morning, uh, I asked, uh, this particular night, I asked Noah, so 1997, I believe it was, uh, what, what do you want God to do? What do you want? What do you want to see in this year? And, uh, and that was the thing she said, I, I want, I want a I want a bed in 1997 because we was sleeping on a mat and uh, and she said I want a new house because we were in an apartment and uh, and she said and I want a baby <laughs> and so I was like well I can help you with the third thing you want <laughs> but the other two you know and, and so anyway uh, I went to prayer I took what she wanted and asked for it to God. And I went to prayer. And that morning, as was my custom, I would go to prayer and I would pray in tongues. Uh, and back then I was, I was, I was, I was hooked, y'all. I was addicted. I would pray in tongues for an hour, you know. And then after that, I would read the word for an hour. And I'll never forget that hour. particular morning, huh? It was like three hours. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I, I, I never forget that particular morning, I was reading Mark 2. I was reading, I believe it was Mark 2, or it might have been Luke 2. But uh, I, I was reading about the paralytic man, yeah, in Mark 2. And I, I got down to the uh, phrase where it says uh, uh, in the 10th verse, uh, 11th verse, it says, I say to you, get up, pick up your bed, and go your way into your house. And uh, and the words jumped off the page. That that was that was that was the morning's uh, rhema word to what I was praying about. I say to you, get up, pick up your bed, and go your way into the house. And so I, I took that word, I underlined it, I put the date, and I, I said, this is what Noe asked me for yesterday. And then uh, later on that night when we got together, I had her read the chapter, and I said, I said, what, what, what is that? And she said, uh, she looked at the verse, and she said, uh, thought for a minute, she said, that's my bed, and that's my house. And, and I said, okay, uh, 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 we're going to take these scriptures that God speaks to us when we pray, and we're going to put them on our wall, and, uh, and we're going to say them and speak them and, uh, and, and until he uh, releases what it is that we're asking for in 1997. Nori, you remember the bedroom with all the scriptures on the wall. Yes, um, yeah, back in that day. But I was going to say, one of the things I was going to say was that... Um, so one of the things that we discovered during that time, because this was all new to me, <laughs> like I went to a Pentecostal spirit-filled church and we prayed, but we prayed at church and, you know, and I prayed at home and things, but I didn't really, I, I didn't understand all of this. And so I was willing to learn though, because I was intrigued by it. I was like, this is going to be like an adventure, you know? 
And I was just excited to see what God was going to do and how he was going to answer even some of the things that he had spoke to me. But we learned that like he, he did, he would be like his prayer and study time would be like three to four hours every day, every day. So he got up early and he would do that. Well, I didn't get up. I, I didn't have that, um, that discipline. You know what I mean? I, I was sincere. I love God, but I didn't, but God didn't speak to me that way either. And um, so I would only maybe pray a half hour, pray and read a half hour or an hour, and I would hear from God. And um, so we discovered that God speaks differently to different people. You know, we, we discovered these things along the way that it doesn't, you know, I didn't have to do it. He never said, you need to do it just like I am. But I, there were times I tried to imitate him because I thought, well, he's getting all this stuff and he's writing all these books and filling up all these notebooks man, you know, how do I do that? Well, let me just, let me imitate and do what he's doing. And it never worked out the way, he, I mean, I would, I would try and I would try to write and do all, but I would never, it just, God just wasn't speaking to me like that. But she, so, would, get, she would get as much as I got with her half hour. Uh, uh, she would get um, stuff in her sleep. I'd be like, how did you get that? <laughs> But I mean, it's so, but all this was, we were learning and honestly, you know, all this, all this training was, I believe for such a time as this, but, but actually now we're in a time where we need to hear from God. God is definitely speaking to all these people, but this praying and understanding of not only just praying, but then allowing him to speak. He's a spirit. So he's going to speak through his word. He's not going to speak to us through um, typically most typically he's not speaking in an audible voice that does happen at, at times, but primarily the way he speaks is through the scripture, through his living word. It's a living word. It's not just words. It's not just a novel. It's a living word. And so when we pray in his language, and this is why we pray in the Holy spirit, because it bypasses our understanding and we're talking directly to God in the language that he understands. Uh, we all know wherever you, whenever you're a part of an organization or a job, you, you start to speak the language that they speak. Like when you're at the job that you're at, you know, a person that works for Nike isn't coming in, speaking things that they heard from Adidas when they work there and sharing and presenting them the, you know, they're not sharing and talking to customers in the same. They're using the, the equipment and all the tools and things that Nike gave them. And so when we come and we approach God in the kingdom of God, we learn to speak that heavenly spirit language. And then we talk to God in that language, the Holy Spirit talks, and then he responds back by way of the Holy Spirit through the scripture. And that's, it's a easy, it's, it's not difficult, but it can definitely be overlooked. And we can imagine that we don't need to do all that. Well, how long it takes and how much time you take is, is going to vary. However, the, the importance of actually doing it and engaging so we can hear God for ourselves, not that we are independent of anyone else, but we are interdependent and we even add to the community that we're in. We add to our household. We add to the organization that we are a part of as a believer in Christ. We're no longer uh, babes, you know, feeding on milk, but we're, you know, taking the meat and we're actually applying and we're not, you know, waiting for God. He's not while, while I say, cause God revealed this to me this way one day, he said, I was the first Avenger. <laughs> and so talking about how he rescued his people, but basically, um, he is not like the Avenger, the Marvel characters. He's not going to swoop in and just with his cape and just you know, pluck us out. And that's not, no, he's got all of these, all of this is part of his plan, but we've got to know his plan. And the only way to know his plan and specifically know his plan for our lives is to pray and read our, and read the Bible, read his word and pray. Let me, uh, let me uh, tag on what you said about, um, the need to be um, a part of a prophetic community or a community uh, just because you are uh, able to hear God uh, 
um, and I wrote this in the book, prophets do not replace the need to hear from God for myself. And my need to hear from God for myself does not replace my need for prophets. Somebody should, somebody should write that down. I know you guys are, are, are not, um, you, you might not be able to write, uh, but prophets do not replace my need to hear from God for myself. And my need to hear from God for myself does not replace my need for profits. You know, we get one way or the other too far often when we start wanting to hear from God for ourselves. We think we don't need anybody and that we could do it without others and particularly without the pastor or the leader. No, no, the, the, the need to hear from God for yourself does not replace your pastor. It actually makes what God wants to do in your life through your pastor tenfold, of, uh, uh, excuse me, two, uh, 10 times effective. In other words, one can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight, and when you are receiving from God, he will establish his word in the mouth of two or three witnesses. You're not getting your word fulfilled or your promises met many times is because the first time you heard it was when you heard it come from the prophet. And you, you, you're not continuing to hear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. And, and so we need both. We need the prophets, the pastor, the apostle, the, the teacher, but we also need to, uh, to be trained by them. We need to be trained by them to hear from God for ourselves so that those things that they speak they can now uh, be deposited in you so that you can grow into what God has called you to do because ultimately you can only do what you've heard God tell you to do. You can't do what you've heard God tell me to do. Like Noe was just sharing. Uh, I never told her to pray three or four hours. Half the time, I didn't even know I was praying three and four hours. I would get lost. And eventually, uh, before I even got married, I realized I need to get up early because I get uh, in there and I don't realize where I'm at. And hours later, I come out of the spirit and uh, I'm thinking I'd pray for five minutes. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was two or three hours later. That wasn't natural. That wasn't normal. I had a broken heart, y'all. <laughs> and so I, I needed that to be healed. But what happened is I got addicted to that. And, and, uh, and so when, when, when I would pray, I would pray until I prayed out of my uh, flesh into the spirit. But that's not for everybody, but everybody needs to develop a relationship with God where you hear from God for yourself, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. It, it, it might not be a broken heart. It, you know, it might be something else, whatever it is that, that draws you to God, he will speak to you to give you help and hope and healing for that situation. And even before it changes, the, the girl never came back. <laughs> and it was another six years until I met Noe. I, I, I met Noe at 28. The, 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 the situation didn't change. She never came back. But I got healed. And out of that, that, that the Holy Ghost uh, 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 addiction, God tied me to him and his word in a way that this was my custom, but everybody has their own custom and their own time with God. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, uh, uh, I, was, I was longing for her time where she would hear from God in her sleep, where she, 
she would hear from God. She would hear from God, just, you know, roll over. Uh, God just spoke something to me and I'm like, what? He said, what? I, I, I never forget, I was, I was rooming with a friend of mine in a, uh, in a ministry assignment a few years ago and, and he was a dreamer. And so he would get, he would get whole sermons in dreams. And, uh, and I would, you know, I would, we were preaching together that day and I would have to get up early in the morning and, and, you know, and hear God, what do you want me to say and write it down. You know, he could, he just woke up time to go to the, to, to, to get ready to go to the engagement. And, uh, and, and he had had a dream and God had showed him everything that was about to happen in the service. And so I remember praying, I'm like, Lord, give me that, that dream anointing where you can speak to me in my sleep. And, you know, since that time, I do, I do dream more. That was about 10 years ago. But everything, everybody's walk is different. Everybody's situation is different. But, but the, the bottom line is, however you hear from God, you need to get connected to the Holy Ghost and let him hear and, and let him speak to you. I want to I wanna close, Noy, with this verse of scripture. So I want to give you Bible on it because some people don't believe in, the, in, in praying in the spirit. People don't believe it. It is even uh, necessary. They think it's a gift that, that, that everybody doesn't have. But uh, in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, pursue love, verse 1, it says, pursue love, yet desire earnestly, spiritual. And in my translation, it has gifts italicized. I don't know if you know what that means when, when a word in the Bible is italicized, but but. When a word is in the Bible is italicized, it means that it wasn't there in the original translation, it was added by the translators. So this, this actual chapter is, is actually speaking of, of spiritual things in relation to uh, communing with God and praying. But the, the italicized added word gifts make it seem as if it's saying this chapter, this whole chapter is on the, on the uh, teaching on the gifts of the spirit. It's actually a teaching on individual personal prayer and corporate prayer. And I'm going to show it to you. I'm just going to read it to you. It's not a teaching on the gifts. It's actually a teaching on praying to a God who is a spirit, who's not flesh and blood, who is a spirit. And so it says in the first verse, pursue love, yet desire earnestly spiritual things, but especially that you may prophesy. Verse 2. For one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to who? Uh, Those who speak in tongues do not speak to men, but to who? They speak to God. Now, my question to you is that is only some people called to speak to God in the new covenant? Or are we all invited to speak to God? Because if, 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 we, uh, if only some are called to speak to God, then this verse is actually uh, qualifying that those that have the gift of tongues, when they speak in tongues, they and only they can speak to God because everybody else doesn't have the gift of tongues. But that's not what this verse is talking about. This verse is not speaking of the gifts as much as it's speaking of your ability to speak to God in an unknown tongue or your prayer language. Look at it, verse 2. For one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him but in his spirit, he speaks mysteries. 
in his spirit, he speaks mysteries. Uh, uh, let, let's keep reading. Third verse. But the one who prophesies speaks to men for edification, exhortation, and consolation. So prophecy is for edification, exhortation, consolation, or comfort. Prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and consolation. I'm going to say it one more time. Prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and consolation or comfort. Now, verse 4, one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Here we see the progression. You speak in tongues to build yourself up. Jude says, on your most holy faith. But one who prophesies edifies the church. What is it saying there? It's saying that before I prophesy to you about God, I have to speak to God for myself to build myself up. And the way I do that is I speak in an unknown tongue. Now, most people think that 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 read this this passage, most teachers that read this passage, most theologians that read this passage that don't believe that everybody has the ability to speak to God in the heavenly language, they highlight that prophecy is more important than tongues. That's not what it's saying. Paul says in the fifth and the sixth verse that the purpose of speaking in tongues is so that you can prophesy for God, either to you and your situation or to others. Look at the fifth verse. Now, I wish that you all speak in tongues. This is Paul's praying. I pray that you all speak in tongues, but even more than that, I pray that you speak in tongues so that you might prophesy. And greater is the one who prophesies than the one who speaks in tongues unless he interprets so that the church may receive edifying. So the purpose of speaking in tongues is speaking in your straight tongue what God said to you when you were speaking in tongues. The purpose of you prophesying is making plain what you heard God say when you were speaking in tongues. Now, I don't have time to read all of this because it's time to activate you in the prophetic. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray for you to, to be activated, the switch to be turned on in, uh, in your heart and in your spirit. But I want to drop down to the 13th verse before I activate you in the prophetic. I want to drop down to the 13th verse. And I want to read uh, how we pray. This is how we pray. Therefore, let, let one who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. Verse 14, for if I pray in a tongue, it didn't say if I prophesy in a tongue. It didn't say if I, if I, if I pray or, or if I operate in the gifts or the gift of tongues, it says, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. I want to ask you, how often does your spirit pray? If I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. But my mind is unfruitful, or my mind doesn't understand what I'm saying when I'm praying in tongues. What is it then? What is the outcome? Verse 15, I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with my mind also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with my mind also. And so the purpose of tongues is prayer. The purpose of you praying in tongues is so that you can say in English, 
what God spoke to you when you were praying in tongues. And, and so if you're not going to, uh, uh, if you're not going to be activated in your, in your prayer language, you're, you're going to be limited by uh, what God can say to you. In other words, your uh, ability to hear from God will be relegated to what people say God said to you. And if you don't pray in the spirit and develop spirit ears, when you read the word, even when you read God's word, you won't understand it. You won't be able to uh, uh, deci decipher it because the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into all truth. And so when, when, when it speaks of the gifts of the spirit, it's not speaking of uh, the tongue that we have to pray. It's the gift of tongues and the tongue, the unknown tongue are two different tongues. Turn to the book of Acts. The gift of tongue and the unknown tongue are two different tongues. Uh, the gift of tongue is, is, is one of the nine gifts of the Spirit. The gift of tongues is one of the nine gifts of the Spirit. The book of Acts, the second chapter. When they received the Holy Ghost, they received an unknown tongue and the gift of tongues. I know, I know you don't, I know you don't know that, believe that, think that, because somebody told you uh, uh, that uh, they only operated in the gift of tongues in Acts 2, but I'm going to show you how they operated in both. Look at verse, verse 2, Acts 2. Acts 2, verse 2, it says, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise, like a violent rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as a fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. All 120 received tongues of fire. Not some of them, not five of them, not 10 of them. All 120 received tongues of fire. And the scripture says, the fourth verse, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, not a comma, not a period. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. That's them speaking in an unknown tongue. And who was they speaking to? They were speaking to God and God was speaking to them. They were speaking to God and God was speaking to them. Look at the fifth verse. Now, when this, now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men of every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the crowd came together. What sound occurred? When the sound occurred of God filling them with the baptism with the Holy Ghost and them speaking to God in that heavenly language, when the sound occurred, a crowd came together. And, and the crowd was bewildered. Now, here they are, because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, why are, are not all these who speak Galileans? How is it that we hear uh, them in their own language, in our own language to which we were born? Now, before the crowd came together, they were speaking in tongues, but they weren't speaking in other languages. The, the gift of the Holy Ghost uh, 
is resident, it carries the gifts of tongues. And so they began speaking uh, when the crowd came together. The scripture says, look at the 11th verse, uh, uh, Christians and Arabs, we hear them in our own tongue speaking of the mighty deeds of God. When the crowds came together, they began to speak to the crowds in their languages, the mighty deeds of God. Before the crowd came together, they were speaking them to God, God to them, them to God, God to get to them. And all of them were filled with that ability to speak them to God, God to them, them to God, God to them. How do I know that they were baptized with the gift of the Holy Ghost and not the gifts of the Spirit? Because Peter says it in uh, Acts 2.38, he says, when he preaches to them what this is, he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, what is it that they were wanting? They heard them speaking in tongues, and they said, this promise is for you. This promise is for your children. This promise is for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God called to himself. It's for everybody, the gift of the Holy Ghost. But that word gift, that word gift is the key. It's not the Greek word charis or charismata, which is what 1 Corinthians 12 is speaking of when it talks about the nine gifts of the Spirit, one of them being the gift of tongues. It's not the Greek word charismatis, matter. It's the, it's the Greek word duron, which means a sacrifice. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, and you shall receive the gift Duron of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive the sacrifice of God. You shall receive Jesus coming to live inside of you, to commune with you, to talk with you, for you to talk with him. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, within the gift of the Holy Ghost is the gifts of the spirit, the charismatics. One is the duron of God, the sacrifice, the gift of, of the Holy Ghost. The other is the gifts within the gift of the Holy Ghost. And most of us, we think that the gifts are what is being referred to when we are baptized in the Holy Ghost. No, the gifts is not what's being referred to. The gift of the Holy Ghost, the duron of God, is what's being referred to when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the more you pray in that unknown tongue, the more you will grow in the gifts of the Spirit or your ability to work in miracles, work in prophecy, move in tongues, move in healing, move in uh, uh, the gifts of faith. These gifts are resident in the gift of the Holy Ghost. And in order to flow in these gifts, you got to pray in tongues. In order to operate in the prophecy of, uh, of the charismatic gift of prophecy, you got to pray in that heavenly language. And, and so that is what activates your, your ability to hear from God, praying in the spirit. And just like you got activated with salvation uh, by, by faith, you get activated in the gift of the Spirit by faith. Uh, just like you, you prayed a prayer that said, Lord, I need you. Lord, come into my heart. I believe that you died for me. I believe that God raised you from the dead. I believe that you are alive. Uh, uh, come into my life. A switch was turned on, eternal life. And, 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 and from that moment, you were born again. The same way you activate 
the gift of eternal life is the same way you activate the gift of the Holy Ghost and all the gifts in the Holy Ghost. You pray a prayer asking God, Lord, you said these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will speak with new tongues. You said ask and it would be given me, seek and I would find not, and the door would be open. For if my heavenly, earthly father knows how to give a good gift to them that ask, how much more will you, heavenly father, give the Holy Ghost to them that ask you? You said this. And praying that prayer activates the gift of the Holy Ghost in you and, 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 and the ability to speak with tongues to speak with other tongues. And, and so I want I want to activate it for those of you that have never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and then I want to stir it up for those of you that have. And very simply, we we are going to activate the prophetic by by praying a prayer of asking or a declaration, then we're going to pray in tongues. And then we're going to listen to what God says when we pray in tongues. And then we're going to write it down. Now, uh, uh, I don't know how many are on here that have never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You don't pray in tongues. Uh, it, it's, no, it's no shame not to pray in tongues. Neither uh, are you any less a believer because you don't pray in tongues. But it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, uh, having an inheritance that you don't know you have because nobody told you you could have it or they told you it was for somebody else. And, uh, and, and, and but you are in the family and, and, and the inheritance is yours. And those that told you it was for somebody else, most of the time, they're telling you it was for somebody else because they don't want you to have what they have to distinguish them as better than you, or they don't want you to go somewhere else to get something that they can't give you where you are. And, and, and so you're not less than because you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but you've, uh, you, you, you've not access all that God has for you. And I'm here to tell you tonight, you can. Abba. <laughs> I'm here to tell you tonight, you can. And so let, let's do this. Let's do this activation. You're going to have to, you're going to have to get somewhere where you can, where you can pray in the spirit. You're going to have to get somewhere where you can actually say a prayer where people around you are not going to think that you, you, you know, just just let them think you're talking to somebody on the phone if you got your phone but uh i want you to uh i want you to pray this activation prayer uh with me first of all if you are a believer uh say this prayer with me say jesus jesus i am a believer i am a believer i believe you died for my sins I believe you died for my sins. I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe God raised you from the dead. You said believers speak with new tongues. You said believers speak with new tongues. So I ask for my new tongue tonight. So I ask for my new tongue tonight. Baptize me in the Holy Ghost. Baptize me in the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues. The evidence of speaking in other tongues. I believe that your word is true. I believe that your word is true. And your word says, if I ask, I shall receive. Your word says, if I ask, I shall receive. So I receive your baptism in the spirit now. So I receive your baptism in the spirit now. I receive the Holy Ghost now. I receive the Holy Ghost now. I thank you for the Holy Ghost now. I thank you for the Holy Ghost now. 
In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Now I want you to lift your hands. If you've never spoken in tongues, I want you to lift your hands and just begin to worship God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because if you ask, you receive. And the way you receive from God or anybody is you thank him for it by faith. And as you are thanking him, God, thanking him for it, I'm getting ready to pray for you to release you into your prayer language. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for a release of the Holy Ghost. You said, ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and we shall find. Knock, and the door would be open. Father, I release now the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, just begin to worship him in that heavenly language. Wherever you are, just begin to open your mouth and say words that don't come from your head or your English vocabulary or your native tongue. Just begin to speak in that heavenly language. Worship him in spirit. Everybody help them right now. Everybody just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Those of you that are baptized in the Holy Ghost, wherever you are, just begin to pray in tongues right now. Worship him in that heavenly language. Rava di animari va senyora. Neri era da da di araba. No shiaria. No shieleva. No ria 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 Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Listen, listen, I, I want to activate you that are that are wanting to flow in the prophetic to hear God's voice. I want to activate you in that prophetic, in the Abba, in the spirit. I want to pray a prophetic prayer to activate your prayer life, to take it to the next level. Even though you pray in tongues, I want to activate you to hear God's voice. Put this, uh, say this prayer after me. Say, in the name of Jesus, I have ears to hear what the Spirit says to me. Say it, say it, in the name of Jesus, I have ears to hear what the Spirit says to me. In the name of Jesus, I have ears to hear what the Spirit says to me. In the name of Jesus, I have an ear to hear what the Spirit says to the church. In the name of Jesus, I have an ear to hear what the Spirit says to the church. I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And I see what is the hope of my calling in, in, in God. And I see what, what is the hope of my calling in God. My life is built upon the revelation of Jesus Christ. My life is built upon the revelation of Jesus Christ. I am the church. I am the church. I desire the spiritual gifts. I desire the spiritual gifts. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Gifts of healing, gift of tongues. Gifts of healing, gifts of tongues. Gift of interpretation, discerning of spirits. Gift of interpretation, discerning of spirit. The working of miracles. Working of miracles. I covet the best gift. I covet the best gift. For the edifying of the body of Christ. For the edifying of the body of Christ. I prophesy with the mind of Christ. I prophesy with the mind of Christ. I am not afraid. I am not afraid. God has not given me the spirit of fear. God has not given me the spirit of fear. But of power, love, and a sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. All right, I want you to begin to pray in tongues.
questions and in in five and and like three minutes we're gonna go silent and i want you to write down in the chat section or the comment section what you hear when you go silent we're gonna pray in tongues for three minutes and then we're gonna write what we heard when we were praying in tongues in the chat section or the comment section it might be a scripture it might just be a word it might be a phrase don't try to understand it just write what you hear as you are praying in tongues you might hear it while you're praying in tongues or you might hear it when you go silent after you prayed in tongues but you're going to write in the chat section in the comment section what you heard when you were praying in tongues so go ahead and begin to pray in the holy ghost and let the spirit of god speak to you just begin to pray in that heavenly language don't be afraid don't be bashful don't be uh, shy. Just begin to pray out in the Holy Ghost and let God speak to you for three minutes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Now go silent and listen to hear something that God was speaking and write it down. Whatever, whatever you heard, go silent for about 60 seconds and then write down what you heard when you prayed in the Holy Ghost. Go silent for 60 seconds. Okay, write it in the chat section, whatever you heard. Write down what you heard. Write it in the chat section, whatever you heard. Abba, glory. Melissa, Melissa Malone heard restoration. Glory to God. Bishop Billingsley heard trust in the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Katrina Stubbs heard, stay strong in me and not in your own ability. Write down what you heard. Kathleen said, this is the day I have promised to you. This is the day I have promised to you. Melissa Malone said, I will complete what I have started. Glenn Supak said, freedom 
is your portion freedom to hear me clearly as I give you authority to set yourself and others free. Noe heard it's time to turn the corner on what I have revealed to you over the years. Costell heard Matthew 20, Matthew 20. Melissa Malone heard you shall live and not die. You shall live and not die. You shall live and not die. Anything that, that, that is been spoken, if it registers with something that you needed to hear or something that you feel like it is uh, connecting with your spirit, uh, take that, claim that. That's, that's yours. That's yours. That's the prophetic speaking to you. Take that, claim that. If, if, you, were, if you were needing freedom, uh, uh, freedom to hear God clearly, take that. I heard I'm breaking fear off of your life and you will no longer be shackled by the spirit of fear keeping you from me and keeping you from my desire and will for your life. Fear is being broken off of someone's life tonight. The spirit of fear is being broken off of somebody's life tonight. Glory to God. Anybody else hear anything? Anybody else hear anything? I'm telling you, this, this, this activation in prayer is, is, the, is the game changer for your prayer life. We, we've taught our children, we've taught our children this. They, they, they now know how to pray and hear from God. From from young from 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 young teenagers and 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 and, and now twenty something, uh, this is a game changer for your prayer life. No, you want to add anything real quick as we prepare to take communion? Oh no, yeah, just that. Um, this is definitely this is definitely what we need. As we just need a um, a booster. We need some more. You know to get this understanding, to get to hear specifically for what you need, um, we need to know and do this. We need to actually do it. Sometimes we, we've done it and then we, we get away from it. We drift away. But then stuff like what's recently happened this year happens and it, it's a means to draw us back to him. It's an opportunity to invite us to come back and return to him to get that understanding. It's similar to um, like when you're a young adult um, something will happen and, you know, you go back home, you know, you would leave home for school or, you know, you leave and get your own place or whatever. And then something would happen and, you know, some situation, uh, jobs lay off or they, the business is closed down or you're done with college and, but you go back home, you return to your parents. And when stuff happens in life, when situations happen, even when things don't go as we planned or we do make mistakes, we do fall and fail sometimes. But that is the time to turn back and return to him, not to, you know, drift away further. So this is definitely a time that we need as his people for our own lives and for the lives of our friends and loved ones, uh, the communities that we're a part of, organizations. We need to be praying and seeking the Lord and we have to uh, resist um, discouragement and discontentment, you know, weariness. Uh, you know, I don't know how many times God had to, well, I don't know he had, but I imagine he must have, if he said it so much to tell Joshua and them, be bold and courageous, only yeah. be courageous, be bold and courageous. I mean, they had already been through um, so many years in Egypt and coming out of Egypt, then there was 40 years in the wilderness for those that last. I mean, you know, they lived longer back then, but that was a long time and you've been hearing these promises and sure God has shown himself and he's revealed himself, but that only, that doesn't carry you forever. This, this, um, this 
praying and it, it's the lifeline to our relationship. Yeah. Carry us through when miracles and signs and wonders and breakthroughs and interventions, those last, but only for a season. They don't last forever because we're not supposed to, we're not just, those are attributes of him, but that's yeah. not. So we want to stay connected and he desires for this fellowship to continue, but it's through the process and not just through good and bad times, but for forever. And yeah. so um, this is just definitely a season that we, we got to um, be intentional about cultivating, you know, our prayer life, not to say that we've never had a prayer life, not to say that we don't ever pray, but this is a time that if you have been praying to be more intentional about getting this understanding and praying with intention to hear God and then to be able to pray what he says regarding our lives or regarding our family's lives. Um, if we have not been praying at all, really, we've not, this is the time to cultivate, jump yeah. in, start it. There's no condemnation, you know? Um, I just, and I'm just thinking of something, talking about praying and praying for others. Um, this sometime earlier this year, uh, Brandon and I were out and uh, we were at a, we were at an ice cream place and um, these people came in, they wanted to take their dog in, but because of COVID, they weren't allowed. Normally you can take the dog in, but because of COVID. So the guy brought the dog back out. Now I was sitting in the car waiting on Brandon and I observed all this. I saw them walking together with the dog. I saw him bring the dog back out. So I figured, oh, he can't bring the dog in. He takes the dog to their car, which is the way. Then next thing I know, I happen to look up while he went back into the ice cream shop. I look up and somebody is holding the dog. Now, I don't know what happened because there was our car, but there was other cars in between. So I couldn't see what happened. All I know was I was like, I think that's that dog. But I just was like, hmm, you know. And then next thing I know, I see them come back out. They get their ice cream. They come back out. They go to the car. Like within a minute, they come back up. The young lady's crying and stuff because their dog is gone. So she's like, oh, my God. And, you know, and he's just he's just trying to be the good guy. You know, he's trying to help and be there for her, console her. Um, but all this, I'm saying all this because I was like, oh, I saw that dog. There was a woman holding that dog. So the, the, the people come up, they're going back and forth and they finally come to the, they come our way. And I was like, Brandon, Brandon, I saw the, I saw somebody holding that dog in this doorway. And um, I was, you know, the dog was gone though for all, the dog was gone. And I was like, we need to pray, pray for her, pray for her. <laughs> and so now the thing about this though, is that they were not, they were brown skinned, they were people of color, but they were not American. They were not American people of color because I could tell by their accent. And so I'm saying, pray for them. So he prays and I mean, <laughs> it was funny because he just got, <laughs> he's got his ice cream. He's trying to eat his ice cream. He ain't thinking about praying, but it was just a quick 10 second prayer in the name of Jesus. Now, again, these people of color are not American. They are not African-American. They are people of color, but they're not American. I'm thinking they're um, Somali or something, but either way, next day we know they come back, they took off, they are gone for about five minutes, they come back, long story short, she got the dog back. She got the dog back. And the whole point of me saying this is that when we're praying privately, then we have a confidence when a situation arises. And in this, I mean, she was distraught. You know, it was probably some designer, you know, hybrid breed dog. And, you know, she was crying and caring. And the poor guy was just trying to help her, you know. And, um, you know, she was, I mean, I'm like, if, yeah, if that dog costs about $5,000, you say, like, she's probably really, but she was really distraught and upset. And I was like, pray for them. You know, and he prayed and he said just like a 10 second prayer. It wasn't that long. And he said he ended it in Jesus name. Now we we never we didn't know them. We probably won't see them again. But the whole point was that was a witness to that to those people, to those young people that Jesus answered their prayer. Yeah. Because if it wasn't have been, I mean, that the dog was gone. The dog had left. It turns out somebody he had jumped out their car and somebody picked him up and I don't you know, they were going to probably take him to the shelter. 
Who knows? Or they were trying to steal it. <laughs> I don't know. But either way, what I'm saying is that we have the confidence to pray. We have the confidence. They didn't ask us for prayer. They wasn't thinking. They were just asking for the dog. They were looking for the dog. And like I said, she was really distraught. And I was like, my instinct was like, you need to pray for them, you, you know, because the, the one is so all of that happened. But what I'm saying is that as we pray privately, see, because we're, we're known we're Christians and as Christians, people have some expectation. When you say you're a Christian, they expect you to, you know, some people have negative things, but some people genuinely are they're looking to you for for hope. They're looking to you for counsel they're looking to you for power you know and as christians we do but it's through prayer Amen. so we praying and cultivating our personal prayer life for us but also for our neighbors our friends our family the people around us so we have that confidence we're not going to have the confidence to pray for people if we don't pray if we don't pray at home we're not going to have confidence to pray for others. So I just want to leave us with that and encourage us that it's more to it than just our personal lives. Yeah. Amen. So uh, let's do our communion. We're going to close out with communion tonight. Um, while while Noi was sharing um, Isaiah, um, her Proverbs 14, 12, Proverbs 14, 12, there's a way that seems right to a man, um, but the end therein is death. Um, Karen Jean-Jacques heard, the crosswalk is the crossover. Jesus, somebody, if y'all don't take that, I'm taking that. The crosswalk is the crossover. And she says, pun intended. Uh, Bishop Bill, Billingsley heard, door, doors are open for you. Doors are open for you. Uh, Shona heard Matthew 3.16. Matthew uh, 3.16. And, uh, and, that, and that basically, let me uh, get that. That says... After being baptized, Jesus uh, came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open, and he saw us, the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting upon him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Uh, Matthew 3.16. Um, and so... Um, Glenn heard Amos 8.11, Amos 8.11. So any of these uh, words that, that register or that um, connect with your spirit, it came from the Holy Ghost in prayer for your situation or for uh, uh, the prophetic to be released out of your prayer. Uh, again, this is... This is not how to prophesy. This is how to pray prophetically. And so uh, there is a difference. And so, but this level of prayer prophetically is teaching you how to be confident that you, you hear God, that you can hear from God. And, and really, you just have to step out by faith. Everybody get your cup, get your bread. And uh, if you don't have a cup of uh, of grape juice, if you don't have a piece of bread, I take this for you and command the covering of the spirit from the body, uh, uh, which was broken for our healing, to the cup, which was uh, the blood shed for our forgiveness. This is our vaccination against COVID-19. We take it every night of the solemn assembly. Go ahead and eat the bread and drink the cup. Tomorrow night is um, Pastor 
Ed Akers, and he's going to be teaching the second principle to becoming a praying believer, purity in the house. Bishop uh, Jeff uh, Billingsley will be teaching on Thursday night, praise in the house. Wednesday night will be uh, Apostle Scott Kelso teaching on um, publish in the house. It is written. And so, um, Glenn Supak, you want to close us out? Thank you. Close out, yeah. So I didn't get your email before there. That's why I didn't uh, say everything we were supposed to say here before. But I want to tell you that, um, you know, I said I put in there a hearing of the word of God and a famine. God is sending a famine and we have the solution. And um, what one thing that I want to uh, close out with was that Brandon said, if you don't hear the God for yourself, and he, he walked out so beautifully and so did Noe, great job. Uh, and tonight, it was just tremendous. You won't pray to God for yourself and seek God for yourself. And you will go with the herd. So I believe that, you know how COVID is, we're trying to achieve herd immunity. I believe that we're on our way to achieve herd immunity from not hearing God immunity from not hearing God and not be like the herd. So Father, we thank you for tonight. Lord, we praise you. We honor you. We give you glory that Lord God, that you have begun a good work in us. Lord, that you want to fellowship with us, Lord God, and you want us to hear your voice so clearly that we can come and rise up and speak your word that is in us with authority that changes the things, that changes the government, that changes our lives, that, that, that destroys sickness and disease and brings deliverance to not only ourselves, but everybody around us. Boy, what a, what a beautiful teaching tonight. Uh, thank you, Noe. Thank you, uh, Brandon. Now, um, Brandon instructed me for a few minutes if you can go over to the Facebook page, uh, when you pray, say, you can maybe ask some questions, make some comments. Even if you don't have time to ask some questions, maybe just make a comment over there. Just go over, over to that page, and then we'll see everyone else tomorrow, beginning with Brondon at 6 a.m. Thank you very much. God bless you.